This is the nature of being human, doesn't matter where the boundary is. The moment I see the boundary, I want to break it. So there is something within you longing to become boundless. If you do not find expression to this, do not matter what you have, you remain somehow unfulfilled. So this is what yoga means, that you breach the boundaries of your physiological and psychological nature, that if you sit here, you're a complete human being within yourself. Well, let's focus for a second on collaboration because as an individual can take it that the Isha Foundation is, is something which is now a, a global movement. So talk to me about the spirit of collaboration. I mean, how you've developed, built these organisms like a human body that you might describe yourself as maybe a platelet within the human body, but you know, there's this huge now juggernaut that's walking and talking around the world. Tell me about the foundations of that thought, where it originated from, and then the spirit of the collaboration. I don't collaborate with anybody. <laughs> Whoever, either they're in front of me or they're not here with me, I make them a part of myself. And this is not my doing, this is the way creation is made. See, you may not be… you may not be able to stand the person who is sitting next to you, but what they exhale, you're inhaling without any problem, isn't it? I'm saying essentially your existence is inclusive, only your mind is exclusive. I made my mind just the way my life is, so it's inclusive. So I don't think in terms of collaborating or confronting anybody, I'm just inclusive. Whether they like it or not, I make them a part of my th life, that's all. I don't seek other people's permission to make them a part of my life, I just make them a part of my life. Because I don't need their permission for this, hello <laughs> So out of this, things happen in many different ways, the various activities. Essentially, the fundamental acti activity is to raise human consciousness in the sense, see right now, our sense of who I am is only because too much identity with physical self. Your physical body is an accumulation, isn't it so? Hello? Hello? Slowly, you came like this, just this much. Now you became this much just by eating, isn't it? Hello? What you have eaten is just a piece of this planet. If you get it from now, if you get it from me now, it'll be good. Otherwise, one day you will get it from the maggots anyway <laughs> It is good then also, because for most people that's the only eco-friendly thing they do. But <laughs> if you get it now, you could transform your life. If you understand the soil that you walk upon, the air that you breathe, the water that you drink, everything around you is actually you, happening. Yes or no? Yesterday what was you is not you today. What is not you today could be you tomorrow, isn't it? What was soil yesterday, today became food, tomorrow becomes your body, isn't it? So what you call as my body is just an accumulation. Whatever we accumulate, we can claim it is ours. But you cannot say it's me. See right now I can say this is my vessel. If I say this is me, you know I've lost it. Hello? <laughs> but this is what you're doing every day. Food appears on your plate, you say this is my food, you eat it and you say this is me. So consciousness means just this. If your physical body is dominant, you think, feel, act in a certain way because physical body is always about boundaries. I'm sorry, my physical body is right now leaking a little bit. <laughs> I need to blow my nose. <laughs> Translator Sadhguru, he had a game of golf, he didn't wear enough clothes and he got cold and now he's got a cold. <laughs> See, he is human. <laughs> I thought I was playing in Chennai. <laughs> <laughs> I once played in Chennai and I lost badly because I, I didn't have a glove on and of course it's 40 degrees, well 38 degrees and the humidity is so 100%. thick. 
it's, <laughs> it's just like walking through water. I don't know why there's a water crisis in Chennai because it is all around your face. Because it's all in the air. <laughs> they could just catch, they could put a tray underneath you as you moved around and catch that water and that would be enough water to sustain you for another day. Um, but I played this round of golf and every time I'd try and hit the ball, the, the club would go further than the ball. So I thought, forget golf in Chennai. <laughs> Sorry, you were saying. <laughs> so, uh, if your body is dominant, you think, feel and act in a certain way because you think through your body or your intelligence works for the boundaries of your body. So naturally, survival instinct will be the strongest, strongest dimension of who you are. When survival instinct is strongest, you always want to build a wall around yourself. When survival instinct is strong, you want to build a wall of self-preservation. The walls of self-preservation are also walls of self-imprisonment. What looks like protection today is imprisonment tomorrow. Has it happened to you or no? In many different ways. Hello? You build a wall thinking this is protection. After two days you realize this is a prison you built. Of course built by you so you cannot easily demolish it, it takes time because so much investment <laughs> has gone into it. If you identify with your psychological process, once again the boundaries may be little larger than your body but still it is a boundary because all your psychological process only happens with the identities that you have taken in. Maybe your race, your religion, your nationality, your ethnicity, something. You have taken on an identity. Your psychological framework works within that. See, when it comes to body, this is my body, that's your body. Clearly, we won't get this till we are buried that it's all the same soil. But this is my body, that's your body right now, clearly. This is my mind, that's your mind. Here and there we may overlap, but this is my mind, that's your mind. But when it comes to life, there is no such thing as my life and your life. Right now the problem with most human beings is, their physiological and psychological process is too dominant for them to realize that the life that they are is of a different nature than the body and the psychological structures that they have built. This is like, let's say you and me blew a soap bubbles. We should have brought it actually, mm, would have been fun. So you got this big bubble, I got that big bubble. Now I exclaim, that is my bubble, the big one is my bubble. It went poop. Then I don't say this is my air, that's your air. Life is just like this, this is a living cosmos. You captured some, I captured some. Now, the whole science of yoga is about breaching the boundaries of your psychological and physiological structure so that you imbibe more and more life. So after some time, the life that you are becomes more dominant than the body that you are, than the thought and emotion that you are. When your life becomes very significantly more than the psychological and physiological processes, if you sit here, you are a significant life not necessarily because of what you do and do not do. You are just a significant life, simply by existence you are significant. Once it happens like this, oh, effortlessly you can function. Every human being is doing this knowingly or unknowingly, most of the time unconsciously. Some are depleting, some are gaining. But as there is a science for external well-being, there is a whole science and technology for inner well-being where you consciously obliterate the boundaries of your physiological and psychological boundaries so that the life that you are is so highly enhanced that you are a significant life. It's not necessarily because of what you do. Simply, your presence and your existence become significant. This is something every human being must do because in body, you are not a match for other creatures. Hello? You cannot run like a cheetah, you are not as strong as an elephant, you cannot even hop like a kangaroo. <laughs> you are no good actually, physiologically. Hello? See… Speak for yourself <laughs> <laughs> 
No, I'm saying, <laughs> if you compare yourself with any other creature, what does the body do? It eats, it sleeps, it dies, reproduces and it dies one day. In all these departments, you are no good compared to other species. <laughs> they eat better than you. There are insects which eat, you know, fifty times their body weight in twenty-four hours. They sleep better than you, many of them sleep for three months, six months at a stretch. Mm. They reproduce better than you, they produce in hundreds, thousands, some of them in millions for you <laughs> just to bear one child, how much fuss? <laughs> they also die better than you without fuss. So physiologically, you are not a great champion, all right? Among humans, you may be… Matthew Hayden may be good, <laughs> all right? Among humans, not comparable to a rhinoceros or an elephant, <laughs> nothing, not even to a gorilla, he'll just smash him up <laughs> Among the human beings, he's smashing the ball all the time <laughs> That's a different matter. I'm saying physiologically, we are not a great presence. Mm. Our significance is our intelligence and our ability to be conscious and inclusive. Every other creature always trying to set boundaries because their whole life is about survival. Once you become a human, survival is not the goal of your life. See, for all other creatures, stomach full, life settled. For human beings, stomach empty, only one problem, food. Stomach full, one hundred problems. <laughs> because what is human unfolds only after survival is taken care of. When survival is questioned, we are also just like any other creature fighting for survival. Only when survival is taken care of, other dimensions of being human come into play. So human life is not about survival. Physical survival is not the end goal of who we are. We are longing to be something more. How much more do you think would settle you? Hello? How much more would settle you? If I make you the king of this planet or queen of this planet, would you settle? No? What do you want? Okay, the solar system? <laughs> no? If I give you one galaxy, you will want the next galaxy. This is the nature of being human. Doesn't matter where the boundary is. The moment I see the boundary, I want to break it. So there is something within you longing to become boundless. If you do not find expression to this, do not matter what you have, you remain somehow unfulfilled. So this is what yoga means, that you breach the boundaries of your physiological and psychological nature, that if you sit here, you're a complete human being within yourself. <laughs>